Okay, here we're looking at a transistor that we have with uh, two bias voltages, one called VBE, and we're going to set VBE great, greater than about 0.7 volts uh, in order to turn it on, uh, and VCE we, want, we know needs to be greater than about 0.2 volts uh, in order to make sure that the transistor is in the forward active region. So in our model of our transistor, we know that the cur collector current, IC, is equal to IS times E to the VBE over VT. And remember, if we were doing PNP analysis, we would just reverse the subscript. It would be VEB. Okay, so what does this plot look like? Well, we know that if the transistor's VBE is less than 0.7 volts, no current should be flowing because that diode is off. So that's the cutoff region. And then once the transistor voltage VBE reaches 0.7 volts, we have this exponential current relationship. Now, what we're really going to do is pick a fixed DC voltage level for VBE, and we're going to do a small signal approximation. So we're going to assume that the signal, the current signal that is, uh, exists around this uh, point is very small in nature. So just subtle variations or wiggles around that bias point. So subtle variations in the base to emitter voltage will cause uh, subtle variations in the uh, collector uh, current. Now remember, what a transistor fundamentally does is it converts an input voltage to a collector current, to an output current. So, we're going to make our linear approximation. We're assuming that the signal swings around that bias point uh, is very small and is linear. So our DC bias point might be in volts and our signal swing is going to then be, you know, certainly less than volts, uh, most likely in the millivolt range or smaller. Now, what I just mentioned was that the transistor converts input voltage to output current. So what it's doing is it's changing this delta VBE into some delta IC. And the way that it's doing it is through what we call a transconductance. So we're going to define something here, which is our transconductance, which is a ratio of the change in the collector current relative to the change in the base to emitter voltage. So DIC by DVBE, and we define this as the GM of the transistor. Okay, so we know that our collector current is equal to IS times E to the VBE over VT, so this is a fairly easy derivative to take. And what we see with this is that GM is simply equal to the collector current divided by VT, the thermal voltage. So we can see that the GM for our BJT only depends on two things. The collector current amplitude or more over the collector current DC level, and VT has a temperature dependence
Remember, Vt, the thermal voltage is equal to Kt over Q. And it's approximately equal to 26 millivolts at room temperature. Okay, next we're going to look at a few other small signal parameters and then we'll put together a small signal model.